Okay, today we are looking at war and propaganda, and we start with a song, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. <laughs> Usually, the maxim is that anytime you have war, and of course, propaganda is usually deployed, and truth usually is the first casualty. In other words, uh, truth is rounded up, you know, and uh, bound and cast out. And this has been a trend, you know, uh, historically and even in contemporary times. People tell all kinds of lies in order to justify you know, warfare and violence and the use of, you know, the force of coercion. I mean, in contemporary times, lots of lies were told about Saddam Hussein and Iraq, and that they had, you know, uh, nuclear weapons till date that has not been found. Uh, same with Libya, that occasioned the invasion. But we also see this even in biblical times. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 10, Thus says the Nakeri king of Assyria, in who do you trust that you remain under siege in Jerusalem? This is him, you know, trying to convince uh, the Israelites that, you know, there are no defense. Uh, you know, uh, in other words, you guys are going to die by famine and by test. You know, if you say that the Lord your God will deliver you from the hand of the king of Assyria, that that's not possible. It's better for you to surrender. As not the same as Zechariah taking away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, "They shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it." So even when there was cleansing of um, idols, you know, and false gods in the minds of the Assyrians, you know, this was you know, uh, God, you know, being removed, and so the people had no defense. Do you know that I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands? Where the God, where were the gods of the nations of those lands and then they were able to deliver their lands out of my hand. In other words, go back and check my antecedent. I've defeated this, I've defeated this, I've defeated that. Of course, they will never talk about their losses. And this is actually the sharing of the cake. Isaiah 36 verse 10. This is who, you know, uh, the messenger of Zeta Kerry. Have I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. So even using the name of God, you know, against the people of Israel, because they know that, you know, these guys are supposed to fear God. So he said that God actually told me, go and destroy this land, which is clearly a lie. Yeah. But the idea is, if you can, you know, uh, you, you use lies, you know, uh, on truths to convince the enemy to, to surrender, then, you know, this is, you know, uh, fine in warfare. You know, deceiving the enemy is part of the strategy of warfare. That's why we've titled this podcast War and Propaganda. So if God told you to go and destroy the Israelites, then how do you explain this? Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 20. Now, because of this, King Ezekiel and the prophet, the son of Amos prayed and cried out to heaven. 21. Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of Balaam leader and captain in the camp in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamed face to his own land. And when he had gone to the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there. So God told you, come and destroy the Israelites. Why is God fighting against you? And so basically what we learn from all of this, don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. You know, you will make the issue look bigger than it is. It is a lie of the enemy. You will make it look like you can never succeed. Others have never been able to succeed. That is the devil telling you lies. And you need God to come in, you know, fight your battle, you know, and make a world of difference so that the enemy is put to shame and you are victorious.